Now, back to more of Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater and your host, Lisa Condon. Thank you all for listening. Excited to be here with Mary Bridget Davies, who plays Janice Joplin in A Night with Janice Joplin, coming to the Hanover Theater for two performances on Sunday, September 15th. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So I have to say, is this every woman's dream come, play, come true to play the queen of rock and roll or what? Oh, it's mine for sure. I used to <laughs> listen to her records and just that unbridled passion that she had. Right. And the command of the stage and everything. You really get to flex your own, you know, emotional range and uh, demons et cetera, because she's a perfect vessel and a ah. perfect conduit for it. And you're just up there really tearing the whole crowd down from the rafters for a couple hours. It's so much fun, but it's so exhausting. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But the music is amazing. Did you did you grow up singing her songs? It's my parents' music. They're baby boomers. It's totally their jam. So while I was rocking out to, you know, my pop stuff and dance class music, <laughs> I'd come home and they'd be listening to, you know, John Lee Hooker and the Allman Brothers and Janis Joplin. So I, it, 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 it's literally, it's just in my DNA. And I've never in a million years did I think, as a little kid, listening and kind of singing along, like, oh, I can kind of sing like that. Um, you know, what a weird gift to have, I think is what I've said at one point. And then, boom, we went to Broadway. And then I was nominated for a Tony for Best Lead Actress in a Musical for the role. So It's amazing. You know, it's, it's amazing. Crazy. Cool trajectory, yeah. So your parents must have been completely thrilled when you got involved with this project. Oh, for sure. And I, because, you know, I started my own band right out of college. <laughs> and it, it's always been, they always knew that I was going to be, it was in dance class. My first dance class, I was three. My Me first too. first title, and, you know, it's on tape. I mean, I was destined slash doomed to be a performer. And I say that because it's quite a, a feast or famine type of uh, career. Absolutely. And so when, when this show came around, they were like, look, we're going to do it regionally and sit down for months at a time and this and that. So before we even got to Broadway, my dad's going, oh, my gosh, she's going to have health insurance. Oh, man, she's going to have, you know, <laughs> all the things that your parents worry about. And my mom's like, oh, man, she's going to get to rock out, you know. Which is, That's hysterical. So, yeah, so it, it was nice. It's, it's been uh, a wonderful opportunity to be able to, you know, keep my wild side, but then also be responsible. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I I wouldn't say I'm an enormous fan of Janis Joplin because, you know, again, it's probably my older siblings' music more than mine, of but course. I certainly remember rocking out and having fun attempting to sing many of her songs. I sure. don't I don't know much about her life except for that she died tragically young. So sure. what were some of the things that you discovered in your work with this musical, A Night with Janis Joplin, that surprised you? Well, and, and it wasn't that it surprised me as much once I learned, but her absolute, like, the, mo the, the respect that she had for all of the black artists that came before her, like Etta James, Nina Simone, Aretha Franklin, Bessie Smith, Odetta, and we all have different wonderful actresses in the show that portray these women as as Janice is telling the story. Because our show, A Night with Janice Joplin, is literally that. It's, you're sitting, if Janice could just put, put together a knockdown, drag out concert for you one last time and tell you about herself. So we don't really dive into the drug addiction or the... the the alcohol or her sexual preferences or any of that. We don't have time. It's about the music and it's about how it shaped her as an artist and that it was so important to her that everybody know about these women that came before her and, and what absolute pioneers they were for her. And that and it just made me appreciate her so much more because 27 years old, you think about that. Right. She was famous. She was only famous for about three years total. It's Not amazing. Even. It's amazing. Have and you had how young that is? Absolutely. <laughs> Have you had the opportunity to talk to any of her musical influences? Well, I actually toured with her band, with Big Brother and the Holding Company. So I've oh. been in the living rooms of like some of her best friends. You know, and wow. the guy that she traveled from uh University of Texas to uh San Francisco with the first time. Um 
that I was sitting there in a guitar circle playing acoustic guitar with him in San Francisco on, you know, on Powell Avenue while uh, Bill Ham was doing his oil and water light show projection, like doing a private show for us. Now, this is the guy that created that and would do those at all the hippie dances at the Avalon Ballroom and every, at all the other venues in San Francisco. And here, here I am just like sitting in her life, basically. If she were still alive, I'd cosmically be in her seat. Like, I wouldn't be there. That must be incredible. Yeah. Ab- it is, and, and you know, it's it's uh, it, for it to inform the character, but also just for me. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> what an experience, yeah. And so, what was the response of some of her friends as you're sitting there and you're meeting them and jamming with them? Um, well, uh, I did. Someone, someone handed me something, and I said, "No, thanks, man. I don't do that." And he goes, "Okay, Janice." Because ah. <laughs> she wasn't particularly into a certain now almost legal substance, as yeah. much as people would have thought in the 60s, you know. But we were in San Francisco, and it, uh, those were the people, and it was counterculture people, just older. And we're all hanging out and playing guitar or whatever, and I'm like, I don't do that stuff, man. And I just kind of just, shout, you know, like waved it because I was playing the guitar. I was like, no. And he goes, oh, okay. He goes, ew, did you see that? And they're like, yeah, that was weird, man. <laughs> because that's how she was, too. If they said even just the way you gestured your hand. They're like, I mean, they were like, it was crazy. It was like having a friend. And of course, you know, same age at the time when this happened. So they wow. were like, was like looking at their friend in a, in a you know, time capsule in and, that same house, you know. Wow. Like, crazy. Right? Yeah. It's just such a such a slice of history and time and place and you're and it really the conduit, is. right? Right. And, and I'm and I'm so proud to be the one that it you know, was honored, bestowed with the honor because I do feel just through I always loved that particular uh well, I love the blues and I love everything about American music and the history of it and the evolution and of course from the Blues came rock and roll, and of course, right out of rock and roll came the counterculture smacked right behind it with all the civil rights movement and everything else going on. So it's not just, hey, there's a girl that's an impersonator and sings songs. Like, I, I've studied the culture and the time and the history, and it, and it means a lot to me. So because things are getting forgotten, it was a much more tangible time. You wanted to do something, you had to walk outside of your house and go do it. You know, right. called somebody and they didn't answer the phone. They didn't answer the phone. Well, how about when you make everything? <laughs> right. How about when you make plans with somebody, you show up at that time and you don't. They're not fluid. They weren't fluid at that right. point. Right. Exactly. And it was just kind of, hey, you know, so many of the people who were populated San Francisco at the time in the '60s during that counterculture movement were underage runaways and young adults. Mm. You know, and the, the like the merry pranksters would spend their mornings making sandwiches and stuff and just go down to the park and hand it out because the kids are starving. Wow. You know, but it, there's there, and, and and you know if you're just like I'm singing this song now it's like I'm singing about that time and that 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 group of the, the counterculture generation because I mean and I've gone I've I've gone all over the world I've gone to Europe with them and gotten to play you know on the same bill with Country Joe and the Fish and that was his. You know, Janice and Country Joe were a thing for a while, and just being in Jefferson Airplane, being around all those people, and uh, yeah, it's it's, it's helped. It's been a it's been a really good time too. And so, what's your favorite part of the show, or of the tour, or the experience? What would you say is the number one thing that just keeps you going and gets you excited to get out on the stage? The audience, yeah, because it's different every night. And it, but it does the same thing to everyone every night if we do it right. And that's when the lights are going and the, and the house is a little bit light and I could see what's going on. And it's just like melting the years away from her original fans Aww. and blowing the minds of the younger ones. And then you look out and they're like all the same thing. Well, and it's just, I mean, I saw a dude walk in with a walker. And at the end of Act One, he was holding it up and shaking it. Oh, look you at know, that. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what it's all like. It's so, it's. We're just getting so sterile. 
and the show is not. It's very visceral, and so so it's fun to see people kind of like lose their mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I can't wait. I'm definitely going. I'm definitely bringing my Good. friends to see a night with Janis Joplin again. There are two performances on Sunday, September fifteenth, and I have to say that all of our listeners so reasonably priced for the quality show that we are talking about. Tickets start at just thirty five dollars, which is incredible nice. when you think that about. Is. <laughs> you, a Tony-nominated um, actress, as well as this right. fabulous show and fabulous music. And, you know, it's about two hours of entertainment. I'm assuming that there's an intermission in mm-hmm. there, but that's that's a lot of entertainment value all at once. And you yeah. do have uh, opportunities for limited VIP packages. So for our listeners, if you're interested, which I know you are, go and check out mm-hmm. our website. It's The Hanover Theater. We spell theater with an R-E dot org. And you can purchase some tickets there. Again, we have two different performances. That's A Night with Janis Joplin on Sunday, September 15th. And we're here speaking with Mary Bridget Davies, who we can tell is the perfect person to play (laughs) Janis Joplin. Thank you. You're welcome. Mary, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Everybody else, stay tuned. We'll be back after this quick break here on WCRN AM 830, Behind the Scenes with the Hanover Theater.